Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the new tier 7 destroyer, the other half of the campaign if you choose to go this direction, the Lo Yang, the first Pan-Asian ship in the game. So with that being said, let's look at our commander. You only get one and his name is Ding Ru Chong or is it Ru Chang? Somebody's going to have to let me know. Uh, we are running Eric Bay and Jersey Swirsky because I do like to have, uh, you know, my concealment. Um, even though the concealment on this thing, not that greatest. So you might swap one of these guys out. Uh, most likely the uh, Jersey Swirsky you would end up swapping out for, uh, you know, maybe Sims or something along those lines. Just a thought. Uh, we are running... His base trait, by the way, is something I think a lot of people are going to be using. Uh, and that is Gunslinger. Main battery reload times, 3%. So, uh, currently, uh, and that's at a legendary one with a level 14 commander. So I'm guessing this can go up to four and a half percent or somewhere in that neighborhood. Maybe it's 4%. Um, but yeah, we're running burn it down. Look at me now back in stock and reaching out XXL. And we do have will to rebuild on, uh, this could potentially be swapped out for, uh, e either of the other two. I uh, haven't had my engine knocked out a whole lot, so I haven't had to worry about unstoppable. Uh, and then, of course, fully packed, obviously, for the extra consumables, extra smoke, that sort of thing. Uh, but honestly, will to rebuild could be a big deal for this thing. Uh, getting into an, an engagement, being able to handle your own, and then fall back to your teammate that can uh, then will to rebuild you. Uh, at least give you 18% of your health, or 20%, forget, I think it's 20%, of your total hit points back. Um, so yeah, that could be a big deal. I don't know. I haven't actually got a chance to test this one yet, but it's a thought. Okay. It's an interesting thought. Now here's the problem. Uh, on paper, this looks like the better ship, uh, to choose from the campaign. Uh, it's got torpedoes. You get a choice between long or short range torpedoes, fast or slow, depending on, you know, obviously the fast torpedoes are the, the lower range, uh, the shorter range torps. And then the slow torpedoes are the longer range torps. Um, but honestly, I just, I'm not a big fan of this ship. I'm just going to be real honest with you guys. Uh, the, the lack of a dedicated destroyer commander, this is a generic commander. Okay. We don't even have twist and track or the new destroyer perception skill or whatever it is. So you are screwed because everybody else has that perk. Every other destroyer in the game has that perk except you basically. So that sucks. Okay. That really, really sucks. Um, put you at such a disadvantage in most of the engagements. Uh, other than that, it's a tier six Benson. I mean, at tier seven, the, the biggest difference and the one redeeming feature that this thing has is a long range sonar, but, uh, we'll get into that in a moment. We are running aiming systems mod one. We are running propulsion mod. We are running concealment system mod, and we are running main battery mod three. And, of course, this is the part where you would swap to your other torpedoes. So, uh, stock, we get the long-range torpedoes that are slow, okay? Uh, you can switch over to the uh, short-range torpedoes that only do 6.7 kilometers, but they are 68-knot torpedoes. So, they're not even that fast, okay? So, you trade out 3 kilometers of range almost, well, 2.5 kilometers of range, uh, for torpedoes that are, what, 12 knots faster? Plus, they're more detectable. So, honestly, I don't think it's worth it to go for the Screamer Torps. Um, but that's just my opinion. Alright, let's look at the uh, loadout. As you can see, we have two smokes. Uh, these smokes are pretty good. Solid smokes. Uh, so, not, nothing bad about that. Uh, the sonar, though, is where this ship actually stands on its own. If you choose anything other than sonar here, you're wrong. Uh, sonar is absolutely ridiculous with a 5.4 kilometer ship detection range, which is the largest for a destroyer, I think, in the game. Uh, I know that the GKs goes, what, 6 kilometers? Um, and I think some of the German cruisers, I think, have like 5.5 kilometer detection or something like that. So this is basically a cruiser sonar on a destroyer. Uh, I could be wrong. Again, you guys know me by now. When I'm pulling stats out of my head, I'm generally wrong. But 
All I'm saying is, it's a very good sonar. 5.4 kilometers puts you to be able to light up enemy destroyers that you're engaged with in a smokescreen battle from outside of their ability to light you up. That's huge. Okay? So, most destroyers have a 4.5 kilometer sonar, if they have a sonar. Uh, the Germans, obviously, they get 5 kilometer sonar. So, you get a 0.4 kilometer buffer zone that you cannot be sonared in your smoke, but they can. So, it, it can come in real handy in certain situations. Uh, we are running the community contributor flag and the camo that comes with the ship. We are not running any boosters currently. Survivability. We have 16,100 hit points, which is another downside to the ship. It's not particularly beefy. doesn't have a lot of hit points. Um, it's on the low end for Tier 7. So, not preferable. Uh, you could obviously, if you drop one of your uh, inspirations, you could put uh, William Sims on here. Get that up to, like, what it be, 19,000 or something like that, or 18,700, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, so you could make that a little better, but still, it's just not that, that healthy. Artillery. 127 millimeter 38s. So you have the American 5-inch 38s, uh, but they're single gun turrets. You only get four of them. And they reach out to 11 kilometers. Reload time in just 2.8 seconds, so they're not bad. 180 degree turn time is a little bit on the slower side for these guns, but no, they're still pretty solid at 6.1 seconds. Uh, HE shell, maximum damage is 1,900 with a 7% chance to set fires. AP shell, maximum damage is 2,200. Torpedoes, you get two quintuple launchers. With the torpedoes that we are running, the long-range torpedoes, they have a 102-second reload time. They do 11,600 damage, so they basically do no damage. By the time you get reduced at uh, Tier 10, or Tier 7, sorry, by the time you get reduced, like, you're doing nothing. Um, so that's not preferable. Um, the detectability of your torps is 1.1 kilometers, so that's at least respectable. Torpedo range is 9.2 kilometers, but they're only doing 55 knots. And that's what I'm saying. Like, uh, these ones are very slow. The other ones are average speed. But the other ones only give you 67 knots speed. And you're trading 2.5 kilometers of uh, torpedo range for that. So I don't think it's, it's particularly useful. Uh, you do get more damage with the other torpedoes, so there's that. But again, by the time it's reduced, you're not going to be hitting that hard. It's not like you're firing Japanese torpedoes, okay? Uh, AA Defense, you have 20mm Ehrlichin Mark IVs, you have four of those doing 14 damage per second, reaching out to 2 kilometers. Then you have the 40mm Bofors Mark I, you have four of those that do 23 damage per second, reaching out to 3.5 kilometers. And then you have the 127mm 38 Mark Thirties, which are dual purpose main guns. You have four of those doing 43 damage per second, reaching out to 5 kilometers. Maneuverability, 38 knot top speeds, pretty average. Uh, turning circle radius 570 meters, pretty solid. Rudder shift time of just 2.7 seconds is fantastic, which is why we chose propulsion mod over the rudder shift. Concealment is pretty good, but not great. 5.2 kilometers will get you close enough to most people uh, to catch them off guard. Uh, but again, without twist and track, a lot of times you're going to be the one caught off guard because while you'll have an idea of where maybe the destroyer is, you're not exactly sure, and a lot of times you'll get caught in crossfires that you didn't know existed. Uh, and that's my biggest issue with this ship. Uh, detectability by air is 3 kilometers. 2 is always guaranteed, and the 2.6 kilometer detectability while firing in smoke is pretty nice. Alright, so armor. You have 19 millimeters of four and, well, basically plating everywhere is 19 millimeters. I think that's pretty average for most high tier destroyers. Uh, but as you can see, it's also got a very big area in the center of the ship where all of the vital stuff can be knocked out uh, with HE salvos. So very easy to knock out the, the, uh, the torpedo tubes, first of all, and also the, uh, the freaking engines and stuff get knocked out. Uh, but honestly, I haven't had the engine knocked out that often in this when I didn't have a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a damage control. So, keep that in mind. Uh, overview. Extended smoke. Increased smoke duration. Uh, nimble aim. Above average main battery traverse speed. 
and agile above average ability to change direction, which we've already talked about every one of these. Uh, Lo Yang, a destroyer specifically built for the U.S. Navy, boasting powerful AA guns and a high speed, she was handed over to the Navy of the Republic of China in 1954. Her armament comprised dual-purpose main guns and quintuple torpedo tubes. She entered service in 1940, and there were 24 of them in the series. And like I said, this thing is, make no mistake, a Tier 6 Benson. But it's a Tier 7, and it's a Pan-Asian destroyer, because reasons. But, with that being said, let's, uh, you know, take a look at her. I, I like the camo in this. I do like it. Um, and, of course, I mean, it's a decent-looking destroyer. It's not an amazing-looking destroyer, but decent. Got those depth charges at the rear. And it's a very familiar ship if you've played any of the American line. Like, it's a very familiar ship for you. So, uh, yeah. With that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alright, so we are going to be on Land of Fire. And, of course, we're in the Lo Yang. Now, this game is not going to be so much a showcase of the raw abilities of this ship as it is going to be... Being in the right place at the right time to help your team win the match. Um, and I think that's going to be mostly what this ship is all about at the end of the day. Uh, will there be good players that can take advantage of this thing's uh, sonar abilities and, and making sure that they can get rid of other destroyers? Probably. Uh, but honestly, I don't think that's where this ship shines. This ship shines as a, I'm going to do what I need to do to win the match. Okay? And that, that's not a bad thing. Uh, the ship itself, like I said, it's very forgettable. There's not a lot about the ship that you haven't already seen in a Tier 6 Benson. Uh, and unfortunately, you're a Tier 6 Benson at Tier 7. And you get matched up against legendaries such as Gearing and Kaba and Kleber, uh that you just have no chance against. Like, they will murder you. Uh, and it's not even close. And I'll be honest, the first three matches I played today, guess what I was put in? Legendary matches. Guess what I was up against? Kaba, Kleber, Gearing, over and over and over again. And of course, they spawn directly across from you. And guess what they have? They have perception, which allows them to see you, basically, or at least know exactly where you are or within reason on the map if you're the closest ship to them. And so, not having that ability sucks. Now, I know it's something that was just put into the game recently, and, and Wargaming, if I remember correctly, said something along the lines of every DD commander will have the ability to have Twist and Track, essentially. Uh, something along those lines is what they said. Uh, but, yeah, that just proves that the Lo Yang's commander is not a destroyer commander. It is the general purpose commander. I think I heard somebody talking about it the other day that said, basically, it's the Pan-Asian Dewey. Okay? Uh, it is the general purpose commander and what have I said in the past general purpose has no purpose okay I don't like that I like all stations ships that have dedicated rules target. and this ship does not have a dedicated role it has a I've got a little bit of everything I'm not great at any one thing but uh, if I get in the right situation I can do well for you now right off the bat this Mogami has decided to come right at me luckily for me the battleship on my team which is a Rishilu I believe is in a great position to take advantage of it and uh, fortunately for the Mogami he doesn't get death struck but he immediately gets finished right thereafter and that is what the ship is good at getting into a position spotting early Pulling people out of positions because everybody wants to kill this thing. Maybe it's just because it's me. I don't know. But that guy couldn't have recognized that it was me in the short amount of time that, you know, I was spotted. Uh, he, he pretty much pulled out. He's like, okay, a destroyer's in the cap. I'm going to go up here and attack the cap. What are the odds that the enemy is going to be in the perfect place to counter me? Unfortunately for him, it was pretty actually perfect. Uh, my teammates were in the perfect place to counter that exact move by him. And I was pretty much ready for it too. I expected somebody there. You know that generally speaking, three people spawn at mid. So we've spotted the Georgia a long time ago. The destroyer was already spotted. It was a ZF-6. And that left one person unspotted. Could it have been a destroyer? No, because the other destroyer was an alpha. We saw that at the beginning of the match. 
these are all things that you pay attention to. So we knew that there was a good chance that either another battleship or a cruiser was next to us. We saw his plane go up on the back side of the island, so we knew he was there. It was just a matter of getting him spotted so that our teammates can help us get rid of him. And he made the exact wrong move at the perfect time to screw himself over. Now here, we know that Tashkent is pushing up on us. We get him spotted. We have better concealment than he does, uh, which isn't hard to brush him. So uh, we throw Torps at his initial heading, and then we speed up and start to turn out. Now we know a gun battle one-on-one -on -one versus this guy not gonna go in our favor. So we start shooting at him, but we are immediately heading away and uh, turning, fishtailing, doing everything in our power to avoid getting hit. But we're also missing a lot of shots because just like the Americans, these shells are pretty floaty. So you've got to learn how to aim them properly. But we're not taking any extra damage here and we're keeping him lit up because he's shooting at us. Uh, and we do land a couple hits now and then to do a little bit of damage, but we can't stay on this guy. Now we've got a choice to make. Our team has given up the alpha cap. They are still live over there, but they have conceded that cap, which I don't have a problem with as long as you don't just fold completely and let those guys encircle your team. Uh, and now our other side has been completely wiped out at Charlie. So here, rather than going back across and trying to get shots on the... the um, the destroyer and the Georgia who are running away we're gonna go into Charlie and catch these guys as they are coming to us um, remember slow torpedoes they don't do a lot of damage but you do have guns and you have an okay detection uh, so we're gonna try to use some of that in this upcoming fight we have two Gneisenos over here and a uh, new Talin now a little bit of inexperience with the Talin is actually going to cost me here. I thought that a friend of mine this morning told me that they had the Talin and that it did not have radar. They are wrong. Because uh, this guy actually does radar me and darn near gets me killed. Uh, but we'll showcase that in a minute. But uh, I went into this fight ex assuming that he doesn't have radar because I'm fairly confident a friend of mine, I'm not going to name him, but I'm fairly confident a friend of mine said, hey, I got the Talin this morning and unfortunately doesn't have a radar. But I could be wrong. It could have been somebody saying they don't have a heel. I heard that one as well, uh, which is weird because I thought all tier seven cruisers had heels now. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get away. I think all of them except for Charles Martel, if I'm correct. Uh, but we're going to push away from these guys. That way we have plenty of room to disengage. Again, planning for the inevitable that I'm going to end up getting detected while trying to capture this base because we know there's a cruiser coming in. We know there's two battleships coming in. Now, we launched those torpedoes way a long time ago. And we are, I believe, going to catch this Gneisenau with a single torpedo. And uh, how much damage do we get? Oh, just, you know, 8,500 damage and a flood. Now, I was really, really hoping that that flood was a perma-flood and that this man was going to flood to death. But uh, unfortunately, he's going to get that uh, flood put out and he's going to survive for a little while longer. Now, obviously, these guys are starting to push in on my uh, detection range, so we need to get out. And there's the radar. And I am six and a half kilometers from every one of those ships. This is not preferable. But you're also going to showcase some of the armor of the ship as uh, these guys fire armor piercing rounds at me, and I shrug off way more rounds than I should have in this fight. Watch this. Plunk, plunk, plunk. Nothing. Plunk. He gets a little bit of damage. One, one over pin on me for 500. Like, given the amount of firepower that was against us right there, it seemed like I was going to die pretty easily. But considering every one of them fired a AP, and I was started. perfectly healthy. So... Uh, we've got one Gneisno that we torped coming right at us. The Talin is running uh, from us to go engage the rest of our team. We do have teammates coming back. Again, my teammates in this fight did a great job of making sure that they didn't get out of position. They were always in a position to A, assist, and B, uh, put, you know, fire on the enemy. They, they weren't in a position where they were just hiding at the back of the map the entire time. Smoke Even the guys set. on the far left, while they seem like they're so far away from everybody have been engaging the enemy this entire time. It's not like they were doing nothing over there, which is something you rarely see in World of Warships nowadays. Now here, we get a beautiful torpedo looking like it's gonna track perfectly for that Talin, and unfortunately, not enough to take him down. But we did get about 10,000 damage out of that torpedo. 
So, basically a full roll. Now you can see this guy is now has gotten a heal off as well, so he's been able to uh, heal up a little bit. And we're going to showcase that long range sonar that we have. We put a smoke screen down, we knew this guy would be in range, and look at us as we're able to farm uh, some hits on this guy while he can't shoot back at us. Look at him desperately trying to pull a trigger on his gun. By the way, battleships, don't ever do that. Like, if you can't guarantee hits on a destroyer and guarantee a kill, all you're doing is making sure that you never drop spot, because you will constantly be detected. Uh, but, in this case, I had him sonar, so it didn't really matter either way. He was going to be detected. Now, here, I'm seeing the bow of a ship come out of the smoke. I don't want to get detected. So, we continue our push away from him. And we're trying to get a little bit off of the bow of a ship so that we can get a good chance to uh, torp him. And uh, he turns in, and it looks like we're going to get a good shot. But then he takes a nasty hit here from our enemy or our friendly Richelieu. And the Atlanta gets a fire, which is permanent after we smack the guy. So once again, teammates coming in clutch to help us take down that guy. And Richelieu's in the perfect position to recapture the Charlie Cat. The base points are very close together, uh, but we are currently taking all three bases. Uh, we have already had B. We've controlled it, and I've said it many, many times. The center cap on a map is one of the most important to get early, just due to the fact that it's so difficult to take late. Uh, so if you can grab the center cap early, you have to do it uh, because it, it will be a steady stream of points. It is the easiest cap in the world to defend on any map, usually. Uh, and so the outside caps are always like the lower priorities. And we have managed to win this side. And now the other Gneisno just went straight for the border. Uh, and he is actually going to go down to this Richelieu in a beautiful position the entire game to take advantage of everybody that is available to be shot at. Uh, so well done to Mike over here. Fantastic game by him and the Richelieu. Uh, and again, by the team. Like, the team did really well in this one. This one wasn't about me. I did my job. I did the spotting early. I grabbed the bases. I came over here, grabbed a base, disengaged, kept myself alive, kept my ability to spot these guys, keep their attention so that my teammates could come in and help. And that can't be understated. Uh, it may not be the most glorious. It may not be the most, uh, you know, you're not going to get the most experience out of it, the most money out of it. I get that. But you're going to get more wins by doing your job than you get losses. And as long as your teammates are in good positions to help you, which, trust me, I understand it's not always the case. Believe you me, we all get those teammates that are the most useless people on the planet and you can just not understand why they make some of the decisions that they make. But at the same time, when you get decent teammates, they don't even have to be amazing teammates. If you get decent teammates that understand basic positioning and are in good position to help you throughout the game, you do not have to get a lot of damage, and yet you will have good games. Uh, we've got two solo caps in this one. We're going to head back into the center to try to help find and uh, get rid of the cruiser and destroyer here. And, uh, you know, that is that is what this thing is good at. It, it may not be the most fun ship to play in the world, uh, but it is a workhorse, and it, it, it is capable of doing whatever you need it to do. Uh, but again, like I've said in the past, general purpose has no purpose. And so... It can be difficult to find games where you actually have good games in this thing. Uh, maybe maybe that's just me. Let me know down in the comments below which of the two destroyers you're personally going to go for. Personally, I think I'm going for Friesland because I just enjoy that ship a lot more. Uh, but I can understand people going for the Lo Yang, and uh, I'm just not a fan. Like, it's just not for me. I have other ships that do everything that this ship can do better. So I don't know why anybody would want this ship in particular. But uh, here we're going to test out the armor piercing. We're six and a half kilometers from a feeder bag. So we're going to test out the armor piercing and see what we can get out of it. And uh, we aim a little high initially. So we're going to try to get these shots down. And once you do get the shots down, you're seeing like 700 damage a shot uh, for penetrations. And Richelieu, of course, being in a position that he's been in for the entire game, able to take advantage and take the guy down. Uh, here we know the destroyer. We know the destroyer has fired torpedoes at us. I think the uh, Atlanta was running sonar, and we're going to turn out. We're actually hitting the guy, but of course, once again, Richelieu coming through and hitting his shots, being in a great position to take advantage of our spotting for the entire match. 
Um, like I said, that man had a heck of a game in the Richelieu. 40,000 damage is all we got. Fourth on the team. Didn't do that well. But look at the guys that were around us. The Ochikov, the Richelieu, the Atlanta. All three of those guys were right next to us at the beginning of the match. And all three of them ended up top of the leaderboard. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.